Welcome to the Halloween Marathon of 2022. <laughs> Last year during my marathon, one of the games that I talked about and one of my favorites for the Super Nintendo was Zombies Ate My Neighbors. But not a lot of people out there realize that there's an actual sequel to that game. Another thing that people are not truly aware of is the fact that Zombies Ate My Neighbors was not developed by Konami. It was only published by them, but the game was developed by LucasArts. Ghoul Patrol was also developed by LucasArts, but this time around, most of the work was done by an outside studio that went by the name Motion Pixel. Konami did not publish this game. That was handled by JVC Musical Industries. Could that be the reason why it was overlooked? If Konami would have been attached to the game, would it have garnered more attention? Or is the game just bad? Let's find out. So right away you will recognize both of the characters that are selectable. Zeke and Julie are back. And this time they're out to rid the neighbors of evil ghouls and goblins. Go away. So while in Zombies Ate My Neighbors you ran around the neighborhood in present time, in this title you're going to be going through different time periods as you try and stop the ghouls and the ghosts from rewriting history. One of the first things that you're going to notice when you start playing the game is that your character movement feels a little bit floaty. It's almost like he's on ice. Also they added two new abilities to your character. You can now jump and you can slide. Jumping basically just gives you the ability to get on top of objects like tables and sofas and stuff like that But you can also jump over some obstacles in some levels It's a cool feature because it gives it kind of a quasi 3d feel to it because now the objects in the environment are not just there for visuals But you can actually interact with them somewhat The second control tweak was the ability to slide it has no offensive use, but rather can be used to keep away from most of the enemies that come at you. I found myself using this feature quite a lot more than I could have anticipated, after I realized that your character is a bit sluggish when moving about. Most enemies will quickly catch up to you and some take lots of hits, and I'm talking a lot, and sliding away is usually your best option. That was an annoying thing too, having many enemies take quite a bunch of hits before they would die. I can see why they made the crossbow unlimited when it came to ammo, but your slow movement coupled with the enemies being faster and requiring many hits means you will get hit a lot, and that means that you're gonna die a lot here. Which brings me to my next topic, the password feature. Another easy to use and very short password system was implemented here. Thank you, just like in Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Four digits, that's it. If you screw that up, you're beyond help. And it's a good thing too because you're going to be using this system a lot. There are 13 levels and 5 boss encounters. The levels are divided into 5 sections. Metropolis, the Ming Dynasty, the Caribbean, Medieval Times, not that place, and the Ghost and Demon World. Each one of the sections has its own boss. And the levels are nicely detailed too, each with its own set of enemies and other little quirks tied to that specific timeline. The levels are also very big and it's easy to get lost in them after some time. Which brings me to my next topic, the victims and the level design. Most of the levels I found not only to be spacious but confusing to navigate and annoying. I say that since many parts of the levels will be blocked off by doors. So most of the time I found myself wasting more time hunting for keys as opposed to saving the victims. This gets annoying real fast. Again, your character's slow pacing doesn't help with this chore. The victims are the other issue. In Zombies Ate My Neighbors, you had a small radar either on the side of the screen if you were playing the Genesis one, or layered on top of the action screen if you were playing it on the Super Nintendo 
and this actually helped you in locating the victims as you traverse the playing field. Extremely helpful and a welcome feature to the original game. It was so helpful that for some reason it was scrapped altogether this time around. There is no radar, instead now you have to follow the victim's text bubbles on the screen to determine which way to go in order to save them. This right here is such a step backwards from the first title, especially when I'm talking about a sequel. Usually sequels stick with the things that work and omit the bad stuff. Why was the radar removed? And I think the reason why is because there are fewer levels on this title. Zombies had 30 levels, while this one only has 13. I guess the developers wanted to make sure kids had a hard time completing this one, giving it a longer shelf life. The music overall I found to be upbeat and comical. It goes well with the overall game without making it feel too serious or scary. I still prefer the soundtrack in Zombies, but this one right here is not so bad. Graphics wise, I'm going to give this one a 9. It's a nice looking upgrade from the first title when it comes to the overall details in the levels. Flying books, walking trees, shark infected waters, all these little things help give each section of the game a distinct feel. It has that unique LucasArts feel to it with the caricature designs of the monsters and the protagonists. Gameplay gets a 7. I found the levels on this one way too large and the fact that you move so slow and the enemies too fast, it's not a good recipe when one of the main objectives of the game is exploration. Sometimes the enemies surround you and before you know it you are down to one hit point or you're dead. The radar being omitted is another blow to the title. That would have helped a lot. But again, I think I know the reason why they did this. Another small annoyance is that once all the victims are safe, you still have to hunt down the exit point. It no longer pops up right in front of you after saving the last victim. That's annoying. So after all that bitching, you might think that I hate this game, but I don't. It's a great title and I think it deserves a 7 on the Halloween meter. It's silly spooky fun that you can tackle together with another player simultaneously. It is a great title that goes perfect with the Halloween season. A spooky title for a spooky holiday. Now be back here tomorrow for a cool PS3 title. Don't miss it. Ha 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 